talking about the principle of gathering. The principle of gathering. And uh, my subtitle is God can put us back together again. God can put us back together again. Because sometimes in life, we get broken. We get shattered. We go through difficulties. And we wonder whether we will be back to where we used to be. We wonder whether we will recover what has been lost. We wonder whether we will recover our joy, our happiness, our confidence in the Lord. I just came this morning to assure you that God can put you together again. Amen. Somebody say, God can put us together again. And personalize it to yourself and say, God can put me together again. Amen. Well, I'm going to start my message today in a very unusual way. I normally start quoting uh, a scripture, uh, but uh, I'm going to start not with a scripture, but with a popular nursery rhyme. And it's an old rhyme uh, that has been uh, recited for generations. Probably you recited it, your children have, your parents did, and maybe if your grandparents went to school, they also recited this rhyme. It's called Humpty Dumpty. Did you ever recite Humpty Dumpty? All right, and how many of you know the rhyme? Let's say it together. Good old Humpty. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses, all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. It's a very old rhyme uh, that we started our nursery with. And it's a character called Humpty Dumpty. And normally uh, in popular culture, Humpty Dumpty is presented as an egg human being with a face, with leg, with arms, sometimes wearing a trouser. Uh, and, uh, and, the, and the rhyme portrays Humpty Dumpty as a very delicate, fragile, weak person, just like an egg is. And he's sitting on a wall, that means he's cool. He's perching nicely, everything is going all. And then he has a great fall. Things go bad. And he cracks up into pieces. And the nursery rhyme says that he goes to the king's horses, goes to the king's men, and they couldn't put Humpty together again. You know, sometimes in life we feel like Humpty Dumpty. We also have a great fall. Sometimes you're sitting cool, you're minding your business, everything is going well, and you think life is a cruise. Everything will be nice. And then one day something hits you and then you fall. And then things go awry. Everything just goes very bad. And what the, uh, the, the rhyme says that Humpty Dumpty goes to the king's horses. I don't know why uh, he thought that horses could help him. Because when you are broken up, horses couldn't help you. And then he goes to the king's men. And none of them could help him. The moral of the story is he didn't go to the king. He went to the king's horses, to the king's men, and they failed him. But he didn't go to the king. But I'm here to announce that there is a king, and his name is Jesus. And if you ever fall, and you have a great fall, his men may not help you, his horses may not help you, but the king himself can put you together again. We call him King Jesus, and he can put our lives together again. You know, because many times when we go through difficulty in life, we go to people, we go to systems, we go to structures, sometimes we go to pastors or a prophet, or we go to somebody who says he's in touch with God, or we go to a specialist, or we go to a consultant, 
and we try to go to all these people and hope that they can fix us. And they do their personal best, but they can't put us together. If you've suffered in life, <clears throat> and you've gone through hands of people, and none of them could fix you, this morning, the king will fix you. Amen. I said the king will fix you, Amen. and his name is Jesus. So now we move from good old Humpty Dumpty, and we go to the scriptures. And you go with me to... What happens to us when we get broken? What happens to us when we get broken? What does God do when we get broken? One of the things I've come to notice is that in life, when you have a great fall, that is when people feel anointed to kick you. When you are down, You'll be surprised those who will kick you, spit on you, make your life miserable. Because somehow, when people find you weak, or things have gone wrong with you, they never think that they should come around to encourage you. That's when best friends will let, let you down. That's when people who have meant you for a long time will add to your injury. That's when you're gonna find people trying to make your life miserable. But that is not God's attitude to us when we have a great fall. When we are like Humpty Dumpty and we have a great fall, God does not treat us as people treat us. So we're going to look first at what God does not do when we are broken, when we are wounded, when life is hard, when we've made a big mistake. What God does not do. Isaiah chapter 42 Verse 3. And it's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and his ministry. He says, a bruised reed he will not break. And smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. A bruised reed he will not break. A reed is very fragile, if you know what a reed is. It's not like a big stick. It's very fragile. It's weak. And when a reed is bruised, then the, the most logical thing you want to do is to cut it off. It's like if you're tending your roses, those of you who do gardening, you're tending your roses and you go to a, your nice rose plant or whatever plant, maybe orchids or whatever you're dealing with, and you find that some of the leaves have become weak. They become brown or they, they breathe, something is wrong with the leaves. Your normal response is that you're going to cut it off. So human beings, when people are weak, when people are fragile, our normal response is cut them off. It's like somebody, a friend of yours who has a lot of problem and they're overwhelmed by life and any time they come to you, they talk and talk and talk and talk and just make your life miserable. They sit in your house and they never leave. And when you want them to go and sleep, they don't leave. Then after some time, you just get tired of them and you want to just cut them off. They are bruised, they are a bruised reed and all we want to do is to say, listen, I don't have time to carry your burden with you but that is not God's attitude. He says, a bruised reed, he will not break. God does not cut off the broken. God does not cut off the broken. Human beings will. Because when you are not productive, you're going to be cut off. They're going to dispose of you. When you are tired and you're overwhelmed, your best friends will abandon you. And some of you have become bruised reeds in other people's lives. Now nobody answers your call. They see you one way, they go another way. Even when they see you in church, they turn and go the other way. Because you become a bruised reed. 
But that's not God's response. And don't ever think that because the king's men and the king's horses can fix you, that God cannot also fix you. Don't ever think that because your best friend abandoned you or somebody you trusted abandoned you, that God would also abandon you because God is not a man. He's not a man. People cannot stand you, but God can stand you. A bruised reed he will not break. And then he says, a burning, burning uh, wick he will not cut off. He will not snuff off. A burning wick, a burning fire that is smoldering, that has become that has lost its fire, God will not quench. A smoking flask, he will not quench. The flask in the days of the Old Testament is like our wick today. And the passage is talking about a smoking flax. What is a smoking flax? It's like when you, you have a candle. It has a wick. And there is a flame on it. And you've noticed that when the light, when the fire goes off the wick of the candle, it begins to smoke. Gets into smoking. And, and that's what God is saying. He says when the fire is off and all we have is smoke, God will not cut you off. He will not extinguish our hopes. Why? Because so far as there is a little smoke coming out from the wick, God still can bring the fire back. God is not the, in the business of taking us completely away. He does not extinguish our hope. So yes, life can hit you bad. Yes, you can get broken. Yes, you can get wounded. Sometimes you feel like all hope is lost. I've lost everything. I can't even see the future. But God says even the little thing that is left there, he can still work with it. He will not extinguish your hope. Because life is going to sometimes deal you a very bad hand. Life, life, life can be brutal. I don't know about you, but life can be very brutal. Unexpectedly, it's going to hit you. But he says he will not break you and he will not extinguish your hope. I think Humpty Dumpty should have gone to God. The problem is, you know, Sometimes when you hear too much criticism, people speak so much evil against you. Somehow in your mind, it messes up your mind and you think that's what everybody thinks about you. If you are a woman and your husband says you're not beautiful, you're not beautiful, look at you and describes you in the, the worst way, somehow it gets into your head and you think that's what God thinks about you. If you're, if you're a man and your wife uh, just beats you up. Who are you? You think you're a man and you can't do this and you can't do that and all of that. And somehow it gets into your head and you think, that's how God thinks about me. But God doesn't think about you the way people think about you. If the reed is bruised, he will not break it. If the flax is smoking, he will not quench it. If all you have is a tiny hope of deliverance, he will not quench your hope. If all you have is, I believe one day it will be well for me, God is not going to quench that hope because he's interested in bringing you back to the place he has appointed you to be. And people's view does not represent God's view. You need to hear that. Because sometimes we hear people's view for so long, we think that's God's view. We think, and, and sometimes even we ourselves... Think there is no hope for us. And we think because we have lost hope, God has also lost hope. But whilst we remain faithless, he remains faithful. 
God will do more than what you can think or ask about. He doesn't break us and he doesn't quench our hope. So if he doesn't do that, what does God do? Psalm 147, verse 3, 2 and 3. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted, binds up their wounds. Three things God does. One, he builds up. When we are broken down, he builds us up. Even when people have failed and you have failed terribly, he still wants to build you up. Secondly, he gathers together. He gathers the outcast. And thirdly, he binds up and he heals. I don't know where you are in your life, but God wants to build you up. I don't know what is scattered in your life, but God wants to gather it. I don't know what is wounded in your life, but God wants to heal you. He wants to bind it together. Now, you may not even believe that about yourself, but that's what God believes about you. You may not think there is hope for you, but God believes there is hope for you. And truly, there is hope for you. There is hope for your future. There is hope that things will get better. And somebody will say, Pastor, you mean in this Ghana? Well, if, if everything we believe is based on Ghana, what a miserable people we'll have. If our hope is based on what is available in Ghana or what is available in Africa, what a miserable people will be. The king's men and the king's horses cannot fix us, but the king can fix us. Yes, there is hope, even in this Ghana, even in Nigeria, in Togo, in Burkina Faso, in Niger, in Mali. Can you imagine if you lived in Mali what your life would be? or you live in Burkina, or you live in Niger, and there are schools taking place, and you don't know where your future is, and you are a young person with great ambition, can you imagine what it would be for such a person? But God says, no matter where you live, no matter what your situation is, he is able to build you up, he is able to gather you, he is able to bind up. Because your past will not determine your future. You're going to make it. And you're going to make it big. You're going to make it big. You'll not be a disappointment. You'll not be a shame. You'll not be a reproach. You will not look back at your life and say, what a wasted life. By the time you look back at your life, you would say, what a great God I serve. See what the Lord has done. See his handiwork in my life. Because God will gather you, God will bind you, God will build you. And if you are a Humpty Dumpty and you had a great fall and nobody could fix you, God says, I can build you up, I can gather you, and I can bind you together. Men may not do it, systems cannot do it, but the king can do it. Somebody say, God is going to fix me. Say it with confidence. Say, God is going to fix me. God is going to fix me. He's going to fix it for me. He's going to put it together for me. I fell, everything scattered, but he's going to gather it together. I'm not going to end on the floor, scattered, broken, wounded, unhealed. I'm going to rise, 
I'm going to get back on my wall. I'm going to sit on the wall again. I'm going to prosper. Because the king can fix me. The king can fix me. And I believe deep inside my heart that, that you are entering a new season in your life. You are entering a season in your life of fixing, of God putting things together for you. It's coming back together. I said it's coming back together. It's coming back together. The pieces are coming back together. If God does not break and he does not distinguish or extinguish our hope, then how should we respond? What must we do? And I'm going to end with this passage from the book of Job. Job chapter 22, verse 28 and 29. If anybody had trouble, I don't think anybody is up to this guy's trouble. Job had problems. My God, the man had problems. Your problems are nowhere compared to him. So when we go to the book of Job, it's always comforting to see what we read there. It says, Job chapter 22, verse 28 and 29, you shall also dec decree a thing, and it will be established for you, so light shall, will shine on your ways. Verse 29, when they say, when they cast you down, you say, exaltation will come. Then he will save the humble person. When they cast you down, you say, exaltation will come. When they cast you down, you don't say, oh, I've been cast down. When they break you, you don't say, I am broken. When life is hard, you don't say, oh, I can't make it. He says, when they cast you down, then you say, exaltation will come. I just feel like somebody should shout, exaltation will come. Say it boldly one more time. Exaltation will come. When they cast you down, exaltation will come. Somebody took you and said, you, I'm going to mess with your life. They took you and they cast you down. But you say, exaltation will come. Exaltation. So what does that tell us? It means that we must not speak about the negative things happening around us. You're being cast down, but don't go around telling everybody, how oh, you being cast down. Everybody has cast me down. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares for me. It's tempting to always complain about the negative. And yes, sometimes you have to talk, to the, talk about the negative things happening in your life. But there's only one person you talk to about the negative things in your life. The one who can fix it. And he's God. So you can go to God and say, Lord, look at what is happening. Oh God, I'm going through difficult. Complain to him. But when you talk to other people, you don't complain to them because they can't fix you. They are the king's horses. They are the king's men. They can't fix you. But when you talk to the king, you can complain. You talk to men, you say, exaltation will come. Exaltation will come. I'm going to rise. I'm going to beat this. I'm going to defeat this. A testimony will come out of my mouth. So I don't know what news you heard this week. Maybe you got a letter. The brightness of this day has given me the opportunity to write to you, John, and to say that we've been on a long journey. We've had a great time. But I think this is when the journey must end. If you had one of those Dear John letters, you felt like Humpty Dumpty. You had a great fall. 
but I came this morning to tell you, exhortation will come. Exhortation will come. Maybe you got fired from your job because the, jo the, the job is going through difficulty. They are downsizing, though. They downsized you. Exhortation will come. Maybe everybody turned their back on you. Don't go around talking about how everybody turned their back on you. You've been cast down, but exhortation will come. Yeah. I said exhortation will come. Yeah. That's what God does for us. When God says he's gathering, it means he's putting us back together. He's fixing things for us. Exhortation will come. Don't talk about the negative things. Don't just go around, oh, oh, this is what, oh, life is so hard, life is so hard. We know life is hard. But he says your word is exhortation will come. And he says you shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. And he will bring you light. What does that tell us? That we must speak about the positive that must happen in our lives. We must begin to speak about the good things that must happen in our lives. Instead of the bad things happening, we speak about the good things that must happen. We are going to decree it. Because your words become decrees. A decree is a law that is enforced. And if you keep talking about how defeated you are and how things are and how, look at me. Look at me. I remember years ago, I talked to a lady. He said, Pastor, look at me. I don't know why she said that. Pastor, look at me. Look at me. No man wants to marry me. Look at me. I'm not looking at you, by the way. <laughs> but I'll say, look at yourself. Do you think you are a miserable person? No. You are a child of God. You have the spirit of God in you. People may spit on you, but you're still the child of God. They may kick you, but you're still the child of God. And when they try to cast you down, and they think you're going to go down to the pit, you say, exaltation will come. So this morning, I just came to announce to somebody, exaltation is coming. Exaltation is coming. You had a great fall, but exhortation is coming. Amen. You got scattered on the floor, but exhortation is coming. Amen. You lost it all, but exhortation is coming. Amen. And God says what is bruised, he will not break it. He's going to make it strong, he will build it. He says what is smoking, the fire is gone, he will light it up again. Amen. And he will make your life well for you. There is hope for you. Amen. I said, there is hope for you. Amen. I said, there is hope for you. Amen. I said, there is hope for you. Amen. Say with me, exhortation will come. Will come. I'm going to make it to big. big. Yeah. You're not going to make it small. You're going to make it big. You're going to make it massive. You're going to make it humongous. When people see you, they have to wear shades. Because you're going to shine so much. You're going to bright so much. You're going to explode so much. They have to put on shades. Lift up your hands to God. And say with me this morning, say, exaltation, exaltation is coming into my life. Exaltation is coming into my life. Exaltation is coming into my life. Now begin to talk to the king, not to the king's horses, not to the king's men. Talk to the king himself. Talk to the king. Talk to the king. 
in your marriage, with your children, with your business, with your health, whatever the situation is, just talk to the king about it. He will exalt you. He will not break you. He will not extinguish your hope. He will not cut you off. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Kaye zabaro. Kamaya sitarana. Imaro shekeala. Igaro zebayana kiata. Oh, hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Great and awesome God. The keeper of our flame. The restorer of hope. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord for new exaltations, for new liftings, for new liftings in our marriages, in our relationships, in our health, in our businesses, in our ministries. Exaltation, new lifting, new lifting. The light is going to be so bright. There will be light. It will be bright. It will be brighter and brighter. It will be brighter and brighter. It will be greater and greater. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Kaya la bosa. Imakori is the barrea. Marukate is a barakosh niya kayasina. Zumi ala fakara de sebroko shikiana. The Lord will lift up his light upon you. His glory will shine upon you. His beauty will be seen in your life. The Lord will honor you. He'll cause you to sit upon your high places. He'll bless you with the blessing of abundance. The blessing of life. The blessing of health, Amen. the blessing of strength, Amen. the blessing of favor, Amen. the blessing of abundance, Amen. the blessing of fulfillment, Amen. the blessing of fruitfulness. Amen. It is well with you. 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 Amen. You will not stay on the ground. You're going back to the wall. You're going back to your high places. May the Lord give you joy. Amen. May the Lord bring happiness in your life. Amen. May there be the sound of abundance Amen. heard in your home, heard in your family, heard all over you. Amen. Father, we speak these blessings. We decree a thing, and it is established for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And amen. If you believe that, celebrate the Lord this morning. Celebrate the Lord this morning. Yes! Yes! Exaltation is coming. Exaltation is coming. For the people of God. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen.